Everything is Ending Here by Liam Hayes, is it? I remembered it probably from the top. Pilot episode, secret knowledge of back roads, fade in. Interior, Alice and Charlie's flat, bedroom, late morning. The air is thick with a lazy Sunday morning haze. Summer peers in through curtains that don't quite fit the window. A TV plays the end credits of some film. Reflected in the screen is the solemn yet vacant face of Charlie, mid-twenties. Superimposed, some time ago, a.k.a. the golden years. Glazed in sweat, Charlie lies semi-naked atop an unmade bed. He is nestled in the arms of Alice, mid-twenties, also sweaty and undressed. Unlike Charlie, she appears perfectly content. OK, now you're just taking the piss. This isn't an advert. No reasonable person has ever been as happy as you're pretending to be right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that you're not accustomed to being in the company of a sexually satisfied woman. <laughs> this must all be very confusing for you. Uh, says you. If my penis could talk, he'd tell you stories that would make Caligula look like a Disney princess. Fine, maybe not from personal experience exactly, but he is surprisingly well read. I always imagined that if a penis could talk, it would sound sort of like an overeager hog hunting for truffles, you know? Kind of a... <laughs> That's fair. Uh, conversely, I always imagined a vagina sounding like a distressed moth beating at its wings against the inside of a lampshade. <laughs> Charlie drums his hand against his cheek, mimicking the sound. Alice gasps in mock offence. <gasps> I don't mean your vagina. No, no, if anything, yours is more of a, I don't know, a sort of whimsical, cutesy flutes and whistles kind of vibe. <laughs> I see. So what you're saying is my fanny sounds like a clanger. <laughs> yes, exactly that. I think that says a lot more about you than it does my genitals. Interior, Alice and Charlie's flat bathroom moments later. Alice and Charlie are brushing their teeth. Charlie looks uneasy as if something is weighing on his mind. Listen, what you said before about being sexually satisfied, mm. it's just, well... You kind of implied that it wasn't a, you know, like a, a regular occurrence type of thing. <laughs> Word of advice, Charlie. I can either placate your fragile male ego or I can look the other way uh, the next time I catch you using my deodorant. I can't do both. Uh, excuse me for wanting to smell of something tangible like roses or jasmine, not abstract concepts like sport or Africa. Besides, you know I have sensitive armpits. Alice buries her nose in his armpit and snuffles around. Mmm, <laughs> jasmine and compromised masculinity. Ah, oh, my favourite. Oh, give over. I'm trying to have an honest conversation for once. No, you're a masochist who's trying to find an excuse not to be happy. It's like my nan always says, if you spend your whole life with your head down, worried that you're about to step in shit, you're never going to see the stars. Uh -huh. And is that what you told our landlord after he made us replace the carpet in the hallway? That's a very literal example. In the shower, moments later, Charlie and Alice are packed into a small box shower. Alice amuses herself by shampooing Charlie's hair, fashioning it into a mohawk. Despite this, Charlie is still sulking. You're taking this too personally, Charlie. You're not seeing the bigger picture. One day, our future biographers will refer to this time as the golden years. That perfect point where neither of us could tell where one ends and the other begins. Face it, our individualities have been compromised. You might even say that when I'm with you, it's almost as if the most me I've ever been. Alice tenderly touches the side of Charlie's face. Too stubborn to meet her gaze, Charlie looks down. Hang on, is that... is that piss? Are you... please tell me it isn't. They... 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 they Tisa, this isn't why they call it the golden years. It's not piss! I'm not... I'm no expert, but it, it's warm, it's yellow, and it's coming out... Yeah. It's not piss, Charlie. <laughs> it's a metaphor for our relationship. <laughs> A part of me I've never been comfortable enough to share with anyone else before. If you need me to put a label on it, it's love. Shit, I, I think you might be onto something. I mean, objectively speaking, 
this is a textbook red flag moment. I keep waiting for the bit where I freak the fuck out, but I don't think it's coming. Wait, this isn't going to involve it as some kind of weird sex thing, is it? I'm too lazy to have a fetish. Oh, wow, you're still going, huh? What? Do you want me to get a UTI? Charlie smiles and gazes into Alice's eyes. He snorts the words, I love you. Doing her best clangor impression, Alice whistles back, I love you too. It's all a bit much. Oh, sometimes we can be a bit sickening where we want to be. Agreed. I mean, can you imagine going through life with a memory like that lodged in your brain? No, oh, it doesn't bear thinking about. Fade to black. Superimpose some years later, a.k.a. the Dark Ages. A haunting Baroque pop song begins to play, In My Room by the Walker Brothers, an ode to love, loss and loneliness. Interior, Magda's house, Charlie's room, mid-afternoon. The music continues to play. The air is stale. Heavy curtains barricade the windows. Atop the bed lies the prone, almost corpse-like body of Charlie. He's older, mid-thirties, more unkempt, a little pudgier. He's wearing headphones, the source of the music. Lying next to Charlie is Alice. She looks exactly like she did before, maybe even better. She whispers softly into Charlie's ear as he half-heartedly tugs himself off under the sheets. Her words cannot be heard over the music. Charlie isn't feeling anything. He removes his headphones. You worthless wank rag. Crust of cum. You're nothing more than a squalid sliver of spunk. Christ, you need a UV light just to prove that you even exist. Charlie doesn't react. It's nothing he hasn't heard before. Uh, no, this isn't the real Alice. This is an imaginary manifestation of Charlie's depression that only he can see. There's a knock at the door. Alice is now nowhere to be seen. Charlie's mother, Magda, early 60s, enters. Despite her age, she has the youthful poise of a children's TV presenter. John? Is that me? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Hello, <laughs> Pocket. It's only me. I just wanted to know, uh, I just wanted you to know that I'm heading out for a bit. It's my day to get my roots done. Not that I need to tell you that, but you can see my grades from space. She opens the curtains, a light beam stings Charlie's face. Anyway, I put a wash out on the line. If it's no trouble, would you mind taking it, <clears throat> taking it in once it's dry? This isn't a trick to get you to talk to me, Charlie. A grunt of acknowledgement would suffice. Charlie remains silent. Magda casts a sympathetic eye over her son. She feels powerless seeing him like this. On second thoughts, don't worry yourself about it. Just do whatever you feel you can. Magda reaches out to comfort Charlie, but at the last second she withdraws. Oblivious, Charlie continues his weary stare. Interior, Magda's house, bathroom, late afternoon. A shirtless Charlie stares into the mirror. He has really let himself go. As he applies some deodorant, the brand Mum, Alice peers over his shoulder and cups his flabby breast. Fuck me. You're so pathetic you can't even do depression right. Ugh, most people actually lose weight, you know that. They get those sunken eyes, those gaunt cheekbones. It's actually kind of hot, albeit in a tedious trust fund indie band kind of way. You, on the other hand, you look like a Wild West wanted poster for Play-Doh pedo. Ignoring her, Charlie takes a hit of mouthwash. He gargles. Of course, there's still one way you could turn things round. Rising to the bait, Charlie pauses mid-gargle. You could always kill yourself. A sliver of mouthwash slowly dribbles down Charlie's chin. Moments later, Charlie is on the toilet. There's the sound of running water. Alice is squatting in the shower, casually relieving herself. Come on. It's not as if you have anything else planned for the day. You've almost finished your shit. What's next? Cigarette? Coffee? Bowl of cereal? Then what? Back to bed for another joyless bout of wanking and weeping. Think about it. Ah. <sighs> The money you'd save your mother in tissues alone is more than enough to offset whatever misplaced feelings of grief she might have. Charlie sighs and tears off a strip of toilet paper. Exterior, Magda's house, back garden, moments later. Charlie is sat on the doorstep smoking. The washing line gently sways in the breeze. 
Alice is stood behind him. She's also smoking, making a point to tip her ash onto his head. You're overthinking this. You're not a character from French literature. Your death will never be some grand existential statement. It's merely a simple solution to a simple problem. In fact, on a scale of difficulty, killing yourself lies somewhere between separating your whites from your colours and learning how to correctly stack the dishwasher. Interior, Magda's house, kitchen, moments later. Charlie shakes the last remaining flakes from a box of cereal into a bowl. He pours in the milk. There's a loud knocking sound. Startled, Charlie drops the milk onto the floor. There's another knock, louder this time. After much deliberation, Charlie peers into the hallway. In the hallway? Someone is at the front door. Charlie strains to identify the intruder, but they're obscured by the frosted glass. Suddenly, the letterbox opens and the intruder peers inside. Charlie quickly ducks out of sight, his heart pounding in his chest. He risks another peek. The intruder has vanished. Back in the kitchen. Charlie returns to the kitchen and breathes a sigh of relief. Suddenly, the back door handle begins to turn. Shit, did he remember to lock it? Panicking, he attempts to retreat. There's a thunderous crash as Charlie slips on the spilt milk, tumbles backwards and lands in a heap on the floor. Seconds later, Charlie comes around to see a blurry figure stood over him. What? The, uh, Bridget, is that you? Charlie rubs his eyes. Before him is Bridget, mid-thirties, an unexploded bomb in human form. Hey up, mate. How the devil are you? Charlie racks his brains for an answer. Alice appears. The words you're looking for... Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> Steady. The words you're looking for are drowning in the open sewer of my own impotent existence. Oh, you know me. I can't complain. Interior, Magda's house, kitchen, moments later. Charlie fidgets nervously as Bridget helps herself to his cereal. Echoing Charlie's pain, Alice mimes hanging herself. So I'm like, how am I the villain here? I'm just trying to have a nice quiet pint and a couple of spliffs. She's the one screaming her head off. Anyway, long story short, we got kicked out of Cine Babies, so we decided to take a drive up to Shit Liam's. You remember Shit Liam? He was the one who spent all of Leeds Festival trapped in a biffer bin outside the back of Mega Tesco's. Well, Im imagine Liam only shitter. Oh, also with lupus. <laughs> Anyway, by the time we get to the to his, I just want to unwind and enjoy some simple homespun comforts, you know? I'm talking Das Boot on VHS, mute the volume and play Maggot Death by Throbbing Gristle on repeat. Next, we bang another line of cheap speed and settle in for a good old-fashioned shepherd's pie supper. All in all, a pretty standard Sunday afternoon. So, how about yourself? I haven't seen you in... Shit, how long has it been? Uh-huh, sounds about right. Last I heard, you'd emigrated down south to be with what's-a-face. Her with the eyes and the face and the, what have you, the, the haircut. <laughs> Jesus, it's like watching an amnesty. An am Amnesiac. Amnesiac, yeah. It's, it's like watching one of them. It's like watching an amnesiac trying to recite the Wi Fi password after a stroke. You mean Alice, and you know it's Alice because I spent the better part of our school years completely obsessed with her. I talk to you about her on a daily basis. Bridget lifts the bowl up and slurps the last dregs of milk. Oh, that Alice. Hey, remember when we got shit-faced on Out of Date Special Brew and stole some pens from Argos <laughs> so we could make our own prison tattoos? You were going to get her name on your wrist, but you passed out after the first letter. Charlie tugs <laughs> on his sleeve, hiding his A tattoo. Come on, you remember? I drew a fanny on your forehead in felt tip. When you woke up, you thought it was permanent. You were so angry, you even gave yourself a nosebleed. Bridget chuckles to herself as Charlie subtly wipes a drop of blood from his nose. His patience evaporates. What are you doing here, Bridget? What do you mean? What are you doing here? Your mum and my mum. They're in the same hip-hop dance class. And you know mums. Mums talk. Charlie's eyes widen. His panic meter shifts to red alert. Uh-oh. It looks like the cat's out of the bag and it's about to take a shit in the tumble dryer. Aww. What What exactly did she talk about? Just mentioned you were here and that I should pop round is all. 
How long have you been back anyway? What is it now? Two years? Three? Four? Hmm. Perhaps you could count the rings on your downward spiral. I'm I'm just passing through, visiting family for the holidays. It's November. Charlie's eyes quickly dart towards a nearby wall calendar. Uh, I, I meant uh, International Men's Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mum's really into it. We eat a ton of penis-shaped food, watch Top Gear special, and then in the evening we all go to a local dog fight. It's a. Uh, I'm a little old for it now, but the kids love it. Anyway, you should probably think about heading off soon. I'm on a really tight schedule. Lots of stuff to be doing. Stuff? What stuff? Charlie flounders as he searches for an excuse. He looks to Alice, who performs an elaborate three-part mime of wanking, followed by crying, before ending with a bullet to the brain. <laughs> 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 I think we like that. That's a good one yeah. to start with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's really refreshing to have one that we're all kind of chuckling to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, 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 it was a much better read. Um, second second time round. Yeah, I, I was really unsure of it earlier on, but hearing it out loud, it's yeah. yeah I yeah. really liked it. <laughs> Um, I, I think I don't have. I made a few notes as you were reading. Um, um, I think you do need to identify what time it is because we're we're there's lots of references to quite a way back. Um, so I'm not sure whether we're in the 90s. Maybe I don't know. Mm. I'm trying to think back. When did we last have VHS? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, early 90s. Early, early, early 90s. Early I mean, and, and the clangers yeah. kind of, you know. Oh, that's that's yeah. Oh, yeah, but they've yeah, been, that. everyone's been knowing about them for the clangers, yeah. Who still knows that. about them, even though they haven't been on TV for maybe decades. Just, yeah, maybe just tell us when it is mm. and and when the um, later is as well, you know, Fine. some years later, how many years later, you know, it's just, just helpful. Um, what else did I... The only other thing I was a little worried about the reference to Africa uh, as a as an aftershave. Abstract concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> an abstract concept <laughs> might not be thing. very acceptable. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe not my generation, that it's a big joke about how shit links Africa is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the early 90s yeah. that we're in, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a specific reference to a yeah. really terrible deodorant. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah. I haven't really. Um, the only other thing I thought was maybe you need an establishing shot up right at the top, just to kind of you go straight into their bedroom. I'm just wondering. Um, you'd usually have an establishing shot outside context, so that you yeah. could see um, what sort of house you're in, or what property you're in, or whereabouts. You know, is it suburban? Suburban? Is it a town? Just so that you've got in your head where you are. Other than yeah. that, yeah, that, that's it really. Anybody well, got anything when I, else? I, I, when I when I read it earlier on, I did wonder initially whether Charlie and Alice were a different were different people because the vocabulary is so similar and they they talk so similarly to each other initially. Um, but obviously that you know they detracted obviously. But it does then bring up the question of is Alice real? Or even has, at the beginning, awesome. yeah. Even at the beginning, yeah. yeah. And to be honest, Rory, that is exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how much of the beginning is his actual fantasy? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Because it's all very 80s kind of, um, you know, Hollywood film, isn't it? Sort of, you, you imagine that the light was coming through kind of like blinds onto the bed, you know. <laughs> and, Especially you know, when... Take My Breath Away was playing in the background, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Especially when Bridget's, talk, when Bridget's talking to Charlie and she's like, you know, oh, what was the name of that girl? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if yeah. he'd been in a relationship, yeah, his friends would know who yeah. he was. Yeah. yeah, you'd think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, possible, yeah. Those are my thoughts. Yeah. Well, maybe that, unra you know, unravels itself as we move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely want you to know what happens next. Yeah, definitely. And I really like Bridget. <laughs> <Great character. laughs> she reminded me of Alex Harrow. Somebody that Rory uh, yes, used to know. 
<laughs> oh my god! Steamroller of a person. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the force of nature. Shall I do mine since I'm in the same room as Rory? Yeah, no, carry <laughs> on. On the screen. Okay. Um, I did wonder who it was for because it's um a pilot episode of something, and I was thinking, I wonder who you know what side it would be, you know which. Yeah, which um, channel they're, would, they're yeah, imagining? Who would show it and who who would who would watch? Um. And it's, I mean, it's fun. It's got some wit to it. I was just thinking, is it for people of young Charlie and Alice's age? Is it them now? Or is it somebody else? Um, I liked it that the writer's name is Liam and there's a character called Shit Liam and that we do know people with names <laughs> like that. It's kind of quite funny, isn't it? Um, and I want to know what happened. I suppose, you know, when we often say, I liked it, I want to know what happens next. In these, which have got like, um, a bit like the, the other one we're going to read, you know, sort of dual time frame. you think, I wonder what happened in between the then and the now. Mm. And... Um, so what happened between, assuming that she's real, Charlie and Alice, um, will it open out to include more characters, locations, um, changes of pace? Um, I was thinking um, earlier, I was talking to Rory about it, and I said, I suppose it'd be cheap to make at the moment, because there's not that many locations or, or actors. And then Rory said, oh, no, hang on a minute. He's got to gain weight because we see him with <laughs> both things. So, oh, dear. You know, so um, I hadn't thought of that. But, yeah, um, having, having to eat pizza and ice cream is terrible. Oh, yes, terrible business. But I think it's good there's lots of work for women, but I did think it'd be quite interesting to see Charlie with other men, if he really is as feeble as he thinks he is, you know, whether the other men <laughs> yeah, think yeah, he is yeah. or, or not. Um, and also, why are some things that I was reading, up, why have they sometimes got, sometimes I thought, oh, is it for sounds we have capitals? But sometimes everything's in uppercase and mm. I can't quite work it out. So, um, yeah, just so you kind of slightly, um, you I know, slightly distracted me. But there's a lot of things like wall calendar. Why is that saying, oh, there's a prop that you need to get or something? I'm not quite oh, sure. Yeah, why. you don't need that in caps. No, it's just no. sounds should be in caps. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Some odd, odd bits and pieces. But th those were my thoughts. But yeah, I did think it was very funny and particularly hearing it, it you know, really lifted yeah. off, off the page. Yeah. OK, um, Stuart. Um, echo other people's comments. I really liked it. I found the um, the dialogue really honest, actually, and quite refreshing. Um, the whole conversation, <laughs> but in the shower or whatever, you know, it was it was just a lovely, beautifully honest, <laughs> um, uh, and natural, if I can say that word. But um, I I I liked the way it was funny, and then it went really quite dark. Mm. Um, and um, I, I kind of like scripts like that, which kind of twist things um, and shake things up and go go dark. Uh, and that dark sense of humour that um, Alice has in the second section. Um, yeah, Bridget, great character, funny, and um, yeah, um, I, I, I again, I'd like to. I kind of want to know what happens, but I'm kind of wondering how much this can play out. I, that's why I'm intrigued to know what happens, because it's like it seems quite packed already what's going on mm. just in a 10 pages. Mm. Um, and it's like, well, how if he's going to commit suicide or whether it's going to be his story or her story or or you're going to see flashbacks of that period between 20s and 30s. Um, so I kind of thought, mm, is there mileage here for a series, you know, and, and if so, where's that going to go with it? Um, is it going to be on dark yeah. or is it going to be light or, or a mixture of both? So, um, but yeah, very, very well written, I thought. Yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. Uh, John? Loved every minute of it. The dark, the dark side of it really appealed to me because I've got that kind of sense of humour personally. The, the whole Alice Charlie, I mean, it is definitely a conundrum. You know, does she exist or is he just fantasising about how he wanted her in her life? She obviously exists because they were at school together because he bored Bridget every day telling her about him. But the whole peeing in the shower thing, you know, I mean, it is atypically a thing a bloke does because he's too lazy to get out the shower to go to the toilet. But... Uh, it just, I loved every minute of it. And this is the first read for me, but apart from the obvious uh, where and when, which seemed to be missing constantly, yep, yeah, really enjoyed it. And the highlight for me was uh, Catherine's uh, penis snuffle. <laughs> 
you just don't cold hear reeds. cold reeds though <laughs> you, you just don't that. hear penis snuffles of that quality anymore <laughs> And on that note, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> At drama school, there was a whole semester on penis snuffles. Yeah, we had a two-week module. Yeah, we had a two-week <laughs> module. Yeah. Yeah, we had a two week almost a whole module. year. Improvised. But most of the students drop out uh, halfway through yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I've got to stick with it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, on that note, uh, apologies. It's uh, literally a, a cold read again for me. So my uh, timing was a tad off, but um, I could see the comedy now. I could read it. It was jumping off the page. Um, it was very well written with regards to the comedy timing, even though I kind of screwed it up there a little, a little bit because I'm reading literally uh, speaking as I read for the first time. Um, but the visuals are really good, um, obviously very funny. Um, uh, the characters were very interesting. It was sort of, I found it kind of ultra crude, ultra realism but with that, that great juxtapositionness of it, there's no sugar coating it, it's, it's just no this people do do this you know it's kind of it's not very pretty but it, it's true so, so um it kind of reminded me of sort of shameless or the royal family that kind yeah, of vibe yeah. that yeah. kind of it we're not going to even try and make it look nice kind of thing mm. um yeah. which which was yeah crude but i mean done correctly that that's just that's just pure comedy cold there um some great puns in there some really good writing really good dialogue I didn't actually think until, uh, I can't remember who said it, was it uh, yourself, Emma, that said that Alice might not be real in the beginning? Oh, it was Rory, yeah. Rory, sorry. Really interesting concept, that. Um, either way, I, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to watch it. It's something that I would watch. Um, you'd have to get a good director, someone that can really direct the actors, because it's, yeah. uh, it's very visual, so you'd need good actors like if you wanted people that were possibly good to play Alice or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, um, <laughs> no, but I, 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 in all honesty, I thought it was great. Um, first cold read and it and it, it off the page for me, it was re really well written. Um, I can't fault it. Apart from the, the time, we do need to know when and where it is. We do need but to that's know. not exactly uncommon in scripts, unfortunately. It's a major thing we need to know. The whole crew <laughs> needs to know this. But, On the top. <laughs> yeah, right at the top. But other than that, very impressed. Well done so far. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I think we like that. <laughs>